Welcome to my impact review ladies and gentlemen. I wish to apologize. I've been very sick for the last couple of days so I didn't get my raw review done. I just want to say this briefly about raw. Am I interested in payback? Not entirely. I just feel that the show has not been structured properly and that affects the pay-per-view. It was good in certain points like seeing Alicia Fox beating the crap out of well, Paige and winning gave me some interest. The Usos, one of the Usos, I think it was Jimmy getting hurt, worried me. Seeing Daniel Bryan's wife, Bree, it might have a feud with the boss's daughter, Stephanie, gives me some interest. But going into this pay-per-view, mm-mm. I will still do the pay-per-view review that will be coming this Monday after I see Payback. But this is not about Payback. This is about Tina Impact. Now I want to say this. Slammiversary is on, what is it, June 15th. And I have to say this. I'm actually getting very interested in Slammiversary. I am actually getting interested. I like how the show has been worked. Is it perfect? Hell no! This Impact was far from perfect. But you know what? It gave me enough interest, even though the crowd wasn't that very strong, that I want to see what's going to happen in the Slammiversary. And I want to see what's going to happen this coming week. Let's get to the beginning of the show. Now I got to say this. I still call them the triple threat. You guys can tell me below what you call the MVP, the Kenny King, and the Bobby Lashley of TNA. What is the faction name to you? I call them the triple threat because they threaten everything about TNA's past factions. Because not only as a black faction, but as a actually decently built one. Throughout the night, seeing how these guys talk, I felt more of an organic feel to it. In other words, actually felt real. Not 100% real. Let's be honest here. It isn't that well done, but still it's done enough that I'm actually interested in this faction. It feels real enough that three guys, they talk to talk and could walk to walk. And the six man tag after the opening segment, I don't need to go into detail with it, it was pretty somewhat lengthy. But wasn't bad with Bully Ray. Seeing Dixie Carter go through a table, Bobby Lashley going through the table and ripping the plastic off the tables wasn't bad. But I don't need to get into detail with it. I don't want to. I have to still say Rockstar Spud still interests me. Even going through a table and losing a shoe. <laughs> but the six man tag was not bad. It wasn't. After it breaks down and it goes the way it goes. And MVP gets to win. I was not upset about it. In fact, I was glad to see it. Because unlike WWE where the evolution should be the evil faction and the shield should be the good guy faction, it feels the flip. I have no interest in cheering the shield even though I like them. I want to cheer evolution even though I don't want to cheer them because they're the good guys and the shield's the bad guys. Here the, the, the triple threat is clearly the bad guys. They have stacked the deck on every last thing. And I can feel it. I want to boo the shit out of these guys. When you look at the end of the show, and I'm doing it now, Eli and Bully Ray having to fight one another. And you got the guest referee as EC3. He had no choice but to get into it if he didn't want to get his ass handed to him by the triple threat. The ring announcer was Kenny King, baby. The enforcer was Bobby Lashley, in the position he should be. He's not a talker. He's a doer. We know this. Bobby Lashley, if he has to talk, must be a face. As a heel, he can't talk for shit. He just is too gentle. But if he doesn't talk, and you don't hear him when he does talk, shows how mean he can be, so he's a perfect enforcer. And seeing, seeing the MVP 
who has spoken very well throughout all of this, made sense. Seeing that they stacked the deck so much that you didn't expect anything but an MVP getting everything over. Doesn't win it this time because Samoa Joe comes back, who I'm very happy to see, but two things have to take into account here. You guys tell me below, kind of flipping around here. In the beginning of the show, seeing MVP in his ring trunks and attire really didn't make any sense. He should have came out in his suit. It would have been better. Because it, it, it really does feel better in that respect. But I can't understand the reason why it was done. It just felt like it was really telegraphed. And when it came to Samoa Joe, who was wonderful to see, he came in just at the right time. The crowd loved it. But before we saw him, we saw a promo segment. Well, not a promo segment. A little preview of Slammiversary. And we saw him on the card. It would have been better to leave that off. That would have gave us more of a surprise. But even with that botch there, I was alright with it. And you can see, seeing MVP not get what he wants this time actually gave me interest to cheer for Samoa Joe. Bully Ray, who I don't like that much because he's been in my face for so long. And Eli, who I do like to cheer for. So I'm alright with that. That was a good segment throughout the night. With the bad guys and the good guys clearly defined and knew their role. Now going into knowing their role, what the hell is going on with Gunner and Samuel Shaw? <laughs> and then dealing with Mr. Anderson and you guys tell me below. If you look at Anderson's wiki, Kenneth Anderson never went to the military because it was never mentioned in the wiki. But it doesn't mean he didn't actually serve. It's just not included. You guys can tell me below if it was actually true that he served. Or they're just trying to make this more interesting because of what the interaction is going to be between Gunner and Mr. Anderson. Now, we didn't see Shaw, but it wasn't really needed this time. Since Mr. Gunner, Mr. Intensity himself, is dealing with this situation, you wonder if he's going to turn heel dealing with Mr. Anderson. Now, Bromance and Anderson and Gunner had a match. Did I care about bromance? No. I didn't give a damn. But they lost like they're supposed to as jobbers. And I had no problem seeing Gunner win. Because he's the one who's being spotlighted here. We still don't know if Gunner's going to turn heel. I believe he will. Or, or he may turn into a manager and deal with Samuel Shaw. Or he may turn into Samuel Shaw's partner. It's hard to tell. We will find out. But what came after that match was the menagerie. And if anyone doesn't like the menagerie, seeing the guys on stilts and Mike Knox commentating saying, Here we are. We are the menagerie. We are the strange ones of professional wrestling. Not in those words, but you get my point. Actually was good. I know Mike Knox is not that great talking. He isn't. He's not 100% great in the ring. He isn't. The Aces and Eights still leaves a bad taste in my mouth, ladies and gentlemen. But, in this format, actually is not bad. And he isn't the one that's just getting directly over. Rebel's getting over. She's so damn sexy with those poom poom shorts. Mm, I want to smell her pants. I'm sorry, I had to say it. The Freak! Looks great. And he destroyed Zima Ion. Crazy Steve. I like seeing. The guy is playing a good role here. And this made the show more interesting. Even if the crowd wasn't really into it 100%. Hey, Orlando crowd isn't always great. We know this. Now. Magnus dealing with Bran. Bram. Was not bad. Before the match with Tiga Uno. It wasn't even about Tigra Uno. It was about Bram getting his first match. Getting over. And showing how destructive he truly wants to be. And trying to turn a madness to the dark side. As you would call it. 
Now, seeing him going up against Willow will be interesting. Is this still a feud between Willow and Magnus? Willow and Bram? Or Bram and Magnus? I still don't know. And to be honest, I don't have a problem with that. I'm actually interested in seeing what's going to happen. I want to see this. I want to see the interaction between these three because it can go any way. And it actually could be good television. If they botch it, I'm going to be angry. I'm going to say it. <laughs> now, let's see. What else do we have here? The Angle video. They showed a little video package beforehand of Angle getting injured and then having the knee surgery. Now, they're not saying when he's coming back. He just said, I've been doing the rehab. I'm doing well. And I thank you to guys on Facebook and Twitter and on TNAimpact.com. I'm all right with that. A small segment once in a while, maybe once every month, you can show Angle to keep the interest. I wouldn't mind seeing that. As long as it's not every week. If they do that, I don't give a damn how great Angle comes back. I'm going to get turned off. So once a month will be alright. As long as it's within two to five minutes. Now, I got to say it. I said this so early. I said it. With Brittany and Madison Rain, they were going to do a bite off of Mickey Jane and Trish Stratus. No one said anything in the comments, but I did say it. There's a good chance this will happen because she's acting so cutesy towards her. And what did I get? I got exactly what I wanted. Brittany's asking Madison Rain for help. Brittany doesn't get Madison Rain's help. Brittany asks Gail Kim's help. Brittany gets Gail Kim's help. Brittany and Gail Kim versus the beautiful people, and I still love Angelina Love's boobs. I still love Velvet Sky's boobs. They're acting very sexual, as I said they would be. In the end, what did we get? We got... A Angelina Love, no, was it Angelina Love who won it or was it Velvet Sky? I don't care. No, Velvet Sky did get the win. It really doesn't matter though. Because Britney lost, Gail Kim got angry, Britney calls out a Madison Rain and says, Why? With the mic messing up because she was screaming so loudly. <laughs> These guys did not notice when someone's screaming very loudly. Turn the mic down so the sound would be very, very good and make sense and not be choppy. Come on, TNA. We want to hear Britney. The crowd got after Britney turning lesbian. I said it and I meant it. A lesbian angle between Britney and Madison Rain. It's a great storytelling. No, who wants to see someone going after Madison Rain? Velvet Sky, yeah. Angelina Love, yeah. Madison Rain, no, but it's still a lesbian thing, something that TNA has done before, that it would work. WWE clearly did it before and it worked. Why not let it happen, even if it's not with the most sexy and most interesting knockout in a Madison Rain, it still works. And I'm more than happy to see it. I want to see if, if TNA doesn't renege on this segment next week because Madison Rain is going to get the title shot because she still has a rematch clause. If they do not renege and pull back on what they just triggered, we will have some good storytelling. Like I said, they were going to go sexual or hardcore with this. It was going to happen. It has happened. And I'm alright with it. Now, uh, let's see am I forgetting anything, ladies and gentlemen. I have not been feeling well because of the weather. My body has hurt very badly. And on top of that, in New York, ragweed has been bad and has made me very sick. Even with my allergies, my allergy medicine, I get bad headaches and I get very dizzy. Now, the ending part I want to talk about is Dixie Carter. The middle of the show, the one hour mark. When we had the Dixie Carter segment with EC3 and everything got set up for the Bully Ray and Eli match. 
I still feel that Dixie is out of place doing this for MVP. I really believe that they should still be separated. Don't let Dixie deal with MVP right now. There's nothing really building into it to make sense for her. Of course, if she gets put for a table because of this, I'm all for it. Even if she is 47, 48 years old, going through a table won't hurt her too badly. Because we've had women go through tables before. But that's if they put her through a table. Seeing this segment, I don't believe Dixie's going to go through a table. Even though this is not being badly done. In the end, the question's going to be, will this be done by maybe Bound for Glory? Because Slammiversary, I don't see it happening. Having this done at Slammiversary will not give the return TNA needs. They need to continue building this up. And I know I'm stretching it with a Dixie Carter. She's not a great heel. She was in the beginning. She's not now. I know. But if you're going to invest in this, you might as well invest in this in a way that gets you somewhere with a good enough of a payoff that when you do it for a pay-per-view, people will want to buy. TNA is still driven by ratings, yes, but the pay-per-view buys will still be built up and could still give them a good investment. They lost a lot of money in the last year. So if they do this right, they could actually make some good money putting that old ass woman through a table. And that's kind of saying much because I'm not much younger than her. <laughs> you got my point. So how was this show? It was a good show. Am I truly interested in everything? No. Willow was not there. Don't know why. Samuel Shaw was not shown, but it wasn't that important to show him. Really it wasn't. Even though we did see Tigra Uno, what happened to Sonata? We need more of the X Division getting time and then getting feuds that have storylines behind it. And that's a big gripe I have. If the X Division does not get storylines with their feuds, it just feels empty. And it feels like an old WCW rehash, which it is, but I can still hope for it. So if I am forgetting something, which I did forget last week because I wasn't feeling well, like Mr. Anderson dealing with... <laughs> I'll say this, seeing Anderson deal with James Storm getting drunk and using fake beer to trick James Storm was damn good. I enjoyed the hell out of it and I hope it was this week they would add on to it but they didn't because they have Anderson dealing with Gunner dealing with Samuel Shaw. I really hope that Samuel Shaw bit will be put aside so Storm will have his time next week. But like I said, this was a pretty good show. But I really felt there was, well, it wasn't too bad, the things that were missing. So I hope you enjoyed the Zane view. Please give me a comment below. Give me a couple of thumbs up. I would like to be seen on the search announcements. Maybe more people will like what I do and I'll try and work harder. Not saying I don't work really hard doing this. But you get my point.